take the checkered flag. For the fifth consecutive time, Jeff Gordon wins on the road course. We don't run good at the road course. We know something's wrong. Jeff Gordon has five straight road course wins. I love the road course. And he should. Today, he comes home to California with a car that knows the way to victory lane. We hope that we've done a few things to make it better, but um, we're going to stick with Old Faithful. Will Old Faithful erupt again today, or will we see a new king of the road? It's still uh, anybody's game out there. And the game is about to begin. Seuss Point Raceway is a swirling corkscrew carved into the rolling hills of the California wine country. This is one of the most beautiful stops on the Winston Cup circuit, but its beauty is a deceptive mask trying to hide the breathtaking danger of high-speed road course racing. Today, 112 challenging laps make up the save mark, Reagan 350. Welcome to NASCAR Today. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Weber. Well, fresh from that shoving match in Pocono on Monday, the Winston Cup Series comes here to Sears Point where there are only two ways to pass. The guy in front of you moves over, or you move him over. Because of the weather and the schedule, these teams will race three times in 13 days. This past Monday at Pocono, today here at Sears Point, and next Saturday night at Daytona. It's a grueling schedule. The top two in the championship standings are just 57 points apart. Bobby Labonte leading Dale Earnhardt. And there's that Jeff Gordon guy going for his sixth straight road course win but it would be just his second win in his last 20 starts. It's time for us to get started. Here's Benny Parsons. Bill, where were you talking about a corkscrew? I think it's a pretty good description of this racetrack. 11 turns, so that's about 22 chances for these drivers to make a mistake. Also, some drivers will be shifting more than 1,000 times. You have to do that every time perfectly, otherwise you could ruin an engine. Here's Ray Dunlap. Well, Benny, Pontiac has only won one time here at Sears Point in the 11 previous races. But I think today the Grand Prix have a pretty good shot. After all, Tony Stewart and Bobby Labonte are running better than ever. And on the outside pole today, Kyle Petty and the Hot Wheels Pontiac. But the sentimental favorite today certainly could be John Andretti. Andretti will run the very last race with STP on the hood of Richard Petty's famous race car. After 29 years of sponsorship, sure would be good to see the old 43 back in victory lane one final time. Here's Matt Yoakum. Ray, while the day glow orange and petty blue colors slowly fade in the NASCAR history, pole sitter Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon chase history of their own. A win today would make Wallace the series all-time road course winner, finally capitalizing on a strong starting spot and fast car. A win today by Gordon would make the Rainbow Warrior tie with Bobby Allison Wallace and the greatest of all time, the King Richard Petty with six road course victories. While one chapter is closing, it could be the sign that another is just beginning. Bill? Thanks, gentlemen. Rusty Wallace with his sixth pole of the season leads the top 25 qualifiers. It's his fourth in the last six races. Kyle Petty has his first top 10 starting spot of the season. Teammates are in row two. Gordon got the solid starting spot he wanted. Martin and Rudd are past winners here. Jimmy Spencer was fifth in this race a year ago. John Andretti at the wheel in the final race for STP. Dale Jarrett came from 29th to 6th a year ago. Terry Labonte starts in the top 25 for just the second time in nine races. Today, Rusty Wallace could become the sport's all-time road course king. It would be your seventh road course win. You're on the pole in a new car. Can you take it to victory lane? I sure think we can. It's really been handling great. It's running super, and uh, we've got good pit selection. We've got a got a pole position, and, and everybody will tell you track position is very important here. So I'm real confident. I feel really good. What's the toughest element of this race? I think the toughest element is probably managing the tires. You got to got to run a long way on on tires here. So uh, we'll see what happens. It, uh, handling, you know, I'd rather have handling over anything. I know I got strong engines. I know I have a good fast pit stop, and we got to make the right calls in the pits. And I've screwed that up a lot lately. Best of luck. Thank you, Rusty Wallace. He's your pole sitter. Here's Ray Dunlap. Well, Bill, the point leader has his best ever qualifying effort. That's Bobby Labonte. You start third today. Have you figured out the secret to winning here at Sears Point? Probably not. Uh, you know, I hope that we can run really good. Uh, the Interstate Batteries guys have uh, given me a great race car, like they do every week, and. Uh, Hopefully we can make it all work. What would you learn in practice all the time you've had on the track here? 
Uh, just trying to get the car comfortable, trying to get some uh, good forward bite. Uh, always want more, uh, never have enough, but uh, hopefully we got it balanced out really good where it'll be good over a long run. Okay, good luck today. Bobby Labonte starts third. Now let's go to Matt. Another guy with a strong qualifying effort, Mark Martin, but the biggest question for you, you guys were trying to find a gremlin in your car during happy hour, fuel pickup problems. Did you solve the problem? I don't know. You know, we've had trouble since Friday, on and off, and uh, pretty much on, and I don't know. Uh, I hope so, but no, we didn't find it. I mean, we, uh, we've done some more things as a team that have done some things for the race, but I really don't expect it to be completely cured. Being a veteran road racer, you've raced in the 24 hours of Daytona. Can you force someone to use up their stuff later in the race? Well, I, you know, kind of, kind of not. You know, I mean, that's a little, putting a little bit too, too much, uh, you know, trying to make it a little bit too dramatic. Hey, you put pressure on somebody and they slide off the racetrack or something, but the equipment will hold up nowadays. And, you know, if, uh, if a guy in front of you doesn't have as good a car as you have, it's going to be harder on tires. You run him hard for a while, you'll get by him. But that, you know, if he's got as good a car as yours, you can't run him, you know, hard and have him use his stuff up. You know, it all comes down to who's got the best stuff. Good luck, Mark. Now let's go to Ray with John Andretti. Well, Matt, the last two times we've run here, John has uh, finished third. Pretty good runs. Uh, are you better now as a driver, or is the equipment a lot better? <laughs> I don't know that I'm any better. The cars are awful good, and um, we're hoping to have a good race for STP this weekend. You know, to celebrate all the years that they've helped Petty Enterprises and in, in, in the sport, and then uh, also to bring in General Mills, the Cheerios, Pop Seeker, and Betty Crocker. So it's a big day for us. Pretty historical day, but is this car good enough to win? I don't know, but I, all I can say is I hope KP wins, and um, I hope I'm up there battling with him. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see if we can find Kyle Petty now. I believe he's down here in uh, driver introductions area with Matt Yoakum. Well, I'll tell you what, Ray, everybody hoping that the Petties could finish 1-2 today, a historical day, both for the 43, the colors coming off the car one final time, and also Kyle Petty, a great qualifying effort as he tries to turn around both the 44 and 43 teams. We'll catch up with Kyle in just a little bit. Bill? Okay, Ray and Matt, thank you very much. Driver introductions continuing here at Sears Point. Here's the rest of the grid. Earnhardt and Jeff Burton have their work cut out for them. Everyone from Johnny Benson on back pits on the Sears Point version of the backstretch. We call it Gilligan's Island. And even the professor couldn't win from there, no matter how many coconuts he wired together. Chad Little took a provisional in his ninth for the season. It's his ninth in 16 races and his fifth straight. Rick Mass, Jeffrey Bodine, and R.K. Smith did not qualify. Next on NASCAR Today, Jeff Gordon says teamwork has led to his five straight road course wins, but you know what? He's been doing all the driving. Then Benny gives you his keys to victory on the 1.95-mile road course at Sears Point. Did you lose the, did you lose the truck? I do not hear the truck. Steve? I have lost the truck. Bill? Okay. Where's Bill at? I have lost the truck. Okay, where are you at, Bill? I'll come to you. Okay, I got it back. You okay? Yep. Okay. I do now. Steve, try to help us out with that. I bagged Matt there because I... You, I know, but after I go through a second question, you got to keep me honest. Here's Jeff if, I, if you want to try and do it. Oh. It's back. Okay. Yep. Okay, i got to get on camera for this, though. I do. Okay. One, two, One, two, three, four. Hi. Scenic bump here, Mike. Yeah, just about how, yes.
Welcome back. The weather here has been beautiful all week. The people at Sears Point have been wonderful. The fans here always ultra-friendly. This is our final ESPN visit to Sonoma. Thanks to everyone here, we will truly miss this place. When it comes to Winston Cup racing, fans know certain drivers run very well at certain tracks. Of course, Jeff Gordon has run very well at almost every track, and he has a remarkable record on the road courses. But his past success has led to some concern about the immediate present. Just one win this season, 10th in points, 366 out of the lead. And today he faces maybe his toughest test, test rather, at what is one of his favorite tracks. Because today everyone expects Jeff Gordon to run well. Everyone including Jeff Gordon. Yeah, if we don't run good at the road course, we know something's wrong. Needless to say, the road has certainly been smooth for Jeff Gordon. Perfection on a road course is a myth. Every lap of every race is a gauntlet of twists and turns, a seemingly endless string of blazing speed, blistering brakes, Jeff and Gordon precise about shifts. But Gordon has solved the swirling mysteries of Sears Point and Watkins Glen using a clever combination of car and crew. I think the gearing is so important, getting the right gearing, and we've really gotten our transmissions uh, extremely close, and, and we constantly just fine-tune, but uh, I mean, we made huge jumps the last couple years in our transmissions and the gearing, and it's just helped me, you know, do better at shifting, getting into the right selection of gear, and being able to maximize the gearing in every corner. But it is driver determination that plays a huge role on this daring road course roller coaster. Its kinks and curves require that you not only know what you're doing, but how to do it and when. Yeah, I think you have to be confident in your shifting. You know, I think that's a big part of it. You know, a, a guy that, that is afraid that he's going to wheel hop every time he shifts is a guy that's not going to be able to attack that corner. And, you know, somebody that's very comfortable with it is going to be able to, to not worry about that. You know, just go in there and say, you know, okay, I know that I need more gear here, less gear here, and just start working on that. Gordon enjoys the sweeping challenge this rare style of racing brings to the Winston Cup Series. And through the years, he has diligently schooled himself on his driving talent and his road course technique. The first time, you know, I went to the road course, uh, it's something that I really enjoyed. Um, I think, I, you know, I've watched guys that are really well, do really well on the road course to try to analyze what they do, why a road course driver seems to stand out, you know, on the road courses, being able to maintain the speed. Today, it's not about how fast you go. It's how you go fast. A slip here may leave your car without a scratch, but it will often destroy any chance of achieving a good finish. Of course, Gordon is looking for more than just a good finish. He expects another great finish. Confidence is something that I definitely have going in the road course, but I also respect the fact that guys are going to improve and catch up to us, and, and we got to keep working hard to stay ahead. Because you have the bullseye on you right now at those tracks. I'm sure we do. I mean, we've won five in a row, so I know guys want to want to go out there and, and beat us, and I just hope we're the, we're the guy to beat out there. Jeff Gordon about to greet his fans around this track. How about your chances today? Yeah, get a good look at it before we go green. Uh, the car is running great, uh, but I'm starting fifth. This is not an easy place to pass, and you know we're. Uh, it's going to have to be a total team effort. But I, I'm looking forward to it. If I can get by this turkey here, he's been hot lately. Okay, best of luck to both Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. Now take a look at the numbers for Jeff Gordon on the road courses. Five wins, three from the pole in the last five races here at Sears Point. Two wins, a second, a sixth, and a third place finish. And as you might imagine, Jeff Gordon plays a critical role in determining BP's keys. So let's bring in Benny Parsons. How about it, BP? Bill, number one today, forward bite. Number two is gear selection. And number three, the Gordon factor. I mean, after all, the guys won five times in a row to get to victory lane. You've got to go by Jeff Gordon to get there. Okay, Benny, now explain forward bite for us and how it's going to affect these guys today. That's what Bobby Labonte was just talking about. These cars coming off the corner, when they nail the accelerator, being able to drive up off the corner and the back end not slip around. When the back end comes around, you're not going forward. Someone is gaining on you. And now we talked to several people in the garage this morning working on gear ratios 
after what they saw in happy hour. Trying to find the proper gear selection. If you have good forward bike coming off the corner, you can stand a little bit more gear, a little more, a little bit more second gear, a little bit, a little bit more first gear maybe. If you don't have that forward bike you're needing, you've got to back up in gear selection and take some second and first gear out of those transmissions. Benny, nobody here will be mistake free, but it's the guy that makes the fewest mistakes that has the best chance to pop the champagne. Exactly right, Bill. 22 times around the racetrack, in and off the corner, you, you can make a mistake. A thousand shifts, if you just miss one, you over ramp the engine, you might blow the thing up. The mistakes will be made today. The guy that keeps them at a minimum probably will win. Okay, Benny, thanks a lot. We'll see you with Ned Jarrett and, of course, Bob Jenkins at the top of the hour. All right, Bill. All right, all these fans have packed Sears Point Raceway. They love this sport, and today they say so long to one of the most recognizable sponsors in sports history. The final race for the STP logo on the hood of that Penny Pontiac. 29 consecutive seasons together, Petty and STP. Can they finish with a win? We'll see this afternoon at Sears Point. What we got to do is stay on course all day. Are we leaving out DJ then? Ray with Rudd. Welcome back to the show. Here are the top 10 in points. Labonte's lead is now just 57 points. Jared is 58 behind Earnhardt. Then it's 29 back to Ward Burton. It's just 145 points from 5th place Jeff Burton to 10th place Jeff Gordon after 15 of 34 races. And this is a race that can lead to a big swing in the point standings. Let's check in with Ray. Well, Bill, the first five times that Ricky Rudd ran here, they were great finishes. Top fives, the last three haven't been so good. What's the deal? Well, we had a real good finish shaping up here last time, and we got tangled up, wrecked with uh, Rusty uh, late in the race, last four or five laps. We were going to finish third uh, and just got a little impatient at the end and uh, ended up getting run off the racetrack, and we tore ourselves up. But we've been running good. We just don't seem to have the finishes out here. Benny's been talking about forward bite off turn 11. Is that the most critical point of this racetrack? Well, as far as acceleration goes, that's right. But uh, I'd say that is a key area under acceleration because it gets you launched up this front straightaway. But I'd say, I'd say even more, probably more important than that is under braking and uh, how well you're going to be in turn 11 and how well you're going to be in turn 7 back there. If you can brake good and brake hard all day, uh, you'll move to the front. If you can't brake, you can't play defense and hold the guys off behind you, and you'll be finding yourself sliding back through the pack. We hope the good brakes come your way today. That's Ricky Rudd. Now to Matt Yoakum. Well, Ray, only twice in Sears Point history has a driver started outside of the top 10 and still gone to victory lane. The Big E, Dale Earnhardt, starts back in 29th. Dale waxing up the three car. What about your chances today? Chances of what? Chances for uh, another win here at Sears Point. You're second. To the front. Good. Good chance. Good chance. So, you know, it's a, a kind of a pit strategy kind of race. Maybe gas mileage there pulled in. So, 
you know, it's this thing will shuffle all around all day long, and uh, we can just uh, maybe be lucky on some pit strategy and some good pit stops. I think we'll be in good shape. Kit, good race car. I think the car's running better, than, better than it showed in practice and qualifying. Kids start right behind you. Going to teach them some lessons today? Yeah, let's woe down because they'll be stopped up there in the corner when we get there. <laughs> First time. Good luck. Let's go to Bill. Okay, well, Dale Jarrett says he three-putted 18 at Pebble Beach on Thursday, or you would have shot an 88. That would have been a good omen, but how about here today? Uh, well, made a lot of changes this morning, but uh, I, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. It's not something that we haven't been close to here. We were really good yesterday morning, and then it seemed yesterday afternoon we got off a little bit, and so we kind of went back that direction, and uh, hopefully we can work our way into the top ten and then into the top five and see if we can challenge them. Good luck. Thanks a lot. That's Dale Jarrett. Let's go back to Ray. Thanks, Bill. We gonna see Petty Blue in Victory Lane today? I hope so. I've got a little bit of Petty Blue on my car, but that STP car's got a lot. John was fast in practice yesterday, and I told him uh, I don't think anybody's pulling for John harder than than everybody at Petty Enterprise and STP are today. Uh, this is the last race for those guys at STP. They've meant so much to our family and our organization. Uh, my father won the first race for him. It would be only fitting that John could win the last race that they were on a car and then start down on a good note with General Mills and Cheerios and head off in that direction. How you like this kind of racing? I enjoy it. You know, I've always been a little bit backwards from everybody else. So the tracks that everybody else loves, I hate. And the tracks that everybody else hates, uh, I enjoy. And I've enjoyed the road courses and some of the stuff I enjoy coming to this area. The people out here are always great. And, uh, you know, we, we unloaded and we run good. Our motor program's been good. Doug's helped our program the last couple of weeks. I'm going to have to send him back to R&D to get the Dodge stuff ready. But everything's worked good so far. Okay, good luck today. Kyle Petty rolls off from the outside pole. Now to Bill. Now, Ward Burton is fourth in points, but today he's one of the guys marooned on the island. He's not worried about winning. He just wants to be rescued. What we got to do is stay on course all day, let the other guys have the problems. Uh, this race last year, we were running six when the two and the ten went off course, and then I got collected with them. But uh, I just haven't had too good luck the last two times here. It's going to take several uh, several laps, maybe a race or two, before I get really, really comfortable with the place. I'm still making the mistakes here and there each lap, and uh, when I can go, you know, when I can run four or five laps mistake-free, then, then I'll feel really confident about it. It's so easy to get off course or anything. You get in the back, you know, you're having to pass cars. Everybody's running about the same. Everybody's good braking. Everybody's got all the stuff now that used to be somebody else had an advantage. And track position, like I said a minute ago, is everything anymore. I think realistically we can be a top ten runner. Um, with a couple breaks, I think we can be in the top five. We came here uh, prepared to, to run in the top ten, and so far we've been on mark. Uh, you know, if you take the cars out of, of the practice that went out and requalified from last session, we were second quickest to Borstead. Uh, he's a road racer as well. I think for us the most important thing is um, keep tires around, good pit stops, and not make any mistakes on race day. The guys built me a new car, and uh, it really runs good. So uh, had a lot of top fives going out here, and something always happened to end, get spun out or caught up somebody else's mess. But uh, you know, I like it. Though. Well, no matter who gets to victory lane, you'll hear from them on RPM tonight. That's the post-race report at 9.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. And we'll be back to Sears Point Raceway in Sonoma, California in a moment. Probably 20 at the most. It'll be 20 from when I get it.
We're here at Sears Point Raceway today. Next week, it's NASCAR today at night. We'll be at Daytona with a pre-race report for the Pepsi 400 next Saturday night at 7.30 Eastern Time on ESPN2. We're closing in on the command of fire engine here at Sears Point. We'll be right back. Same, same camera. camera. Yeah. yeah. How much time? Frame, and I'll step out of frame when I'm done and go to move to Mike or to Matt. Got it? Yeah, stay on the camera. No, no camera change. I'll just step out of the shot. Yeah, and then Matt steps in. Okay, so stay on the camera and I'll step out of frame and he'll move to Matt. You're sending Brad Hinton to the 99 car, right? Another sunny and warm afternoon in Sonoma, California. This course is 1.949 miles long, 112 laps, 218.288 miles. We measure. Here's Red. Well, Bill, I'll tell you what. Tony Stewart has had a great season with two wins, but he also has three DNFs this year, and you cannot afford to DNF at Sears Point. There's usually 29 or 30 cars on the lead lap. You cannot make a mistake even on the final lap or you'll drop way down in the running order. It's imperative to stay on the course. Last year, Elliot Sadler started 32nd. He finished 18th. He never passed a car all day long. Here's Matt. Well, Ray, everyone has been waiting for the paybacks from Dale Earnhardt to Jeremy Mayfield for the bump and run Mayfield put on Earnhardt at Pocono. It came this morning in the driver's meeting. When he walked in, Earnhardt bumped him in the back of the head to payback. Everybody started laughing, but today the magical number could be 60, because today is the 60th opportunity that the 43 car has a chance to win. If he wins today, it will be their 61st victory with STP colors. Bill? Thanks, guys. I'm here with Jeff Burton in the 30th starting spot, so a uh, interesting afternoon ahead for you, I'm sure. Yeah, it's going to be long either way. Uh, you know, we had a great call on Friday. I was a little bit too cautious in qualifying and got us back here, but uh, we've got a good car. We just got to... You know, keep it on the keep it on the real slick uh, black stuff, and uh, keep it out of the walls, and we'll have a good day if we can do that. How are the tires here, Jeff? I think they're okay. Uh, this place is real abrasive. It's hard to keep the tires on the car. But uh, yesterday the XI Taurus is uh, really good on a long run. We'll just see what happens. Okay, Jeff Burton has never started higher than 12th at Sonoma. In fact, in seven races here, he started 20th or worse six times. Just one top 10 finish. Again today, he breaks from the 30th starting spot. The drivers are in their seats. The fans are standing next to theirs. Watch pit road strategy today. Maybe as many as 40 laps on fuel, but the tires may not go that far. This is the first race at Sears Point on the new generation Goodyear tires. Remember what happened here in 1991? Ricky Rudd capped Davey Allison in the hairpin. Rudd was black flag. Allison won the race. Today, Ricky Rudd returns to the scene of the crime, driving that same famous 28 car that Davey drove. NASCAR today, next Saturday night at 7.30 from Daytona. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. Now, strap in for the St. Mark Cragen 350, coming up next over on ESPN. <laughs>